uh, writing test plans and, and then also helping with actual uh, testing that uh, to perform. And I say I'm happy because as, uh, as that guy from that team, he said to me once, he said, everyone hates me. And I say, why? Uh, because I only bring bad news. So wherever I find the bug, uh, developers just have more work to do. And I said, okay, but we don't hate you. Actually, that's not true. Um, but when he has reports, but he, when he reports the bugs, uh, yeah, we hate him. <laughs> All right, so going back to this process. As I said, um, well, it was a requirement from the client, from the customer, so we After some time, uh, since it caused more stress than it solved anything, and these documents, they don't solve all your problems, you still will develop and you will see later uh, during the re review process that is also done additionally uh, by the customer. description that we said, I didn't think that you will do it in this way. So that's not a panacea. Uh, so uh, we have evolved. We've been working with this client for two, about two years now, probably. So we, what we changed, uh, we changed how we look at this process. So the basic construct stayed the same. So the client is still happy uh, because we didn't change all the boxes. But we looked at it not as something that we need to deliver just for the sake of delivering, uh, but what we get from this process. So uh, regarding the specification part, for example, we no longer do it for someone, we do it for our own team. This is something that we do in the preliminary stages to just look at the system, look at the, all the connections to other systems and see uh, what we need to do in order to accomplish this task. So that when it comes to actual implementation, uh, everyone is familiar with it. Uh, everyone sees the whole scope. It, it helps in, in every part. So uh, first of all, uh, our planning, uh, uh, sprint planning sessions, uh, they decreased. We, we were doing it like almost. Also, it's, it, it allows uh, developers to learn because uh, even if they will not be implementing uh, this solution, they will see what are the parts in the system that are working together. So next time, maybe you won't even need to specify that. They will automatically know that if you change something here, it automatically will break down in that other direction. And of course, after some time, they will say, why don't we just refactor everything? But that's another story. And uh, of course, less surprises on the way. I mean, during uh, design stuff, of course, you can have many surprises. But once you get it fixed and you go to development, it's not like in the middle of the sprint you say, damn it, we didn't think about that and we need uh, two more weeks to do the same thing that we thought that we'll do in three days. So uh, what we did with all of this? We con sprint and uh, as you can see this bulb is not a regular light bulb it's not that much saving and not m that much a light bulb so we got something like this um, probably Uh, tracking of all the stuff we do in development also for time tracking uh, that will go to the client for accounting and also what we have here is that we manage not only to go over the time 
So the sprint end is here and then the end is here, actual. But we also uh, were able to go below the zero line, which is impossible, but we somehow found the bug in Jira and still did it anyway. Uh, so I decided that maybe it's easier if, you, if, if I just draw uh, the schematics and explain it from here. So uh, that is the typical burn down chart that calculated how much we can handle. So it was expected that we will go to below the, the baseline. Uh, but somewhere uh, in the next uh, half of the sprint, it, it turns out the first, uh, the first uh, suspects were these design specification tasks. Because we just estimate at home, how much do you need to write a document? I don't know, four hours, eight hours, 12, 20. Ah, let's take it like 12 hours. Uh, but uh, the real thing is that you don't know how much complexity you will get until you actually look. Uh, that is one point. The second point is that maybe the requirements are, aren't very clear. So you will need to go back to product owner and they will need to go back to business and so on and so forth. And then also if there are external parties involved, so the time will run by and, and you will either need to wait. So basically you are doing nothing or you need to switch between tasks and that is also slowing down the work. So we had another bright idea. We just removed it from Sprint. We just would not put design tasks to the sprint. We decided we would handle it differently, in some different way. Um, after some time, we thought that basically Makes sense because um, although it's like the first week and it sh could go wrong something, but if you are just after sprint planning, it's your head is fresh with all the ideas that you discuss. You should be going relatively at the same speed. So we started digging again and saw that it's probably this testing tasks that we also included. In to be performed later uh, after you implement something. And since we had a dedicated person uh, for, for those tasks, so basically you would not work full time on this project. So what we get initially, so for example, if we have three developers, Is if you are something like this, something. Sprint also. Um, everything was almost okay until. have uh, a code review in the process. So once you develop the, pro uh, the task, 
you need someone to look at the code. Uh, and for that, we didn't think that it would cause such a problem with accounting this. So we just created a separate task in the whole sprint and just calculated roughly how much time it would take. Maybe half an hour for each task. Maybe, I don't know, maybe more, maybe less. Uh, but the problem with this is that at the end of the sprint, this task could get exhausted because we underestimated how much time we needed. But we will only see it at the end of the sprint once the whole scope of those tasks that you need to do in the code review uh, get exhausted and get done. And while it may be very easy to think that how much it is to review the code, like maybe there will be two pages of code, so maybe it will take 15 minutes, but that's only in the optimistic case. Because consider if you actually find something that doesn't match. So the developer has to go back and redo it, and you have to re-review it again. So that's why you should account a little bit more time than you think that it's in the good case. So we basically, uh, uh, what we did, we removed the task as its own task and incorporated uh, the time required to review the task in each task itself. So it got a little bit bigger and we also, for our convenience, added this uh, additional swim lane uh, in the scrum board in Jira. You can do that and so instead of going to do in progress done, you just first go to review and then go to done. So it's uh, do, uh, every day uh, during uh, stand-up meetings, you can see that you have something not really done. Okay, so to recap, we removed everything from the sprint that we couldn't reliably estimate. And also we removed uh, any like accumulation. There were no tasks that would include a lot of other tasks. Uh, and only basically uh, raw development tasks were left in Sprint. Uh, why do we do with all the other stuff that we removed? How do we handle it? Uh, another bright idea, Excel. I think that there is nothing that you cannot do with Excel. It's, it's the number one tool, tool for everything. Uh, until you actually start using it uh, globally for more than one people, uh, for more than one person. So you get multiple copies with different uh, timestamps, with different contents and so on and so forth. So we decided, no, we need to think about something else. And um, it was maybe a little bit uh, a coincidence uh, how we found this, is because when you are creating a new Agile board, in Jira, and we are using the new uh, integrated uh, uh, Agile uh, plugin. Uh, it's actually a wizard that asks if you want a Scrum board or if you want a Kanban board. So we thought, uh, why not? Maybe we can try that another one. So we just did that. Uh, we created a separate Kanban board in the same project with basically uh, roughly the same things that we have in our process. Except maybe for this little trick that you can set up uh, Jira in such a way that if you put uh, your tasks here in the Kanban board, it will automatically appear in the sprint uh, backlog. So it's, it's, it's an automatic transition of tasks. This flow sort of starts in Kanban and finishes in Scrum. Um, it was okay until we started using it more and we found that uh, for some of those columns, show to yourself that somebody needs to take it. Then when somebody takes and starts doing it, you have to see that somebody is working on this many tasks. And when you actually finish, you also need to have another column that you say that, okay, we have already finished, we can go back to the client and review with them. Um, so a lot more columns appeared and it just wouldn't fit uh, on the screen. I mean, Jira.
every story was like, in, I don't know, in Chinese or Japanese. So we decided to split those boards in. in Uh, very important column here is the irre irrelevant. because uh, they first gave us this task. So uh, in order to remove this confusion, we don't remove tasks from backlog uh, in any way. It's either you develop it or you put it in a relevant stuff so that you can go back and quickly see. Uh, the same trick here with the Kanban boards. You can set up it in such a way that if you put uh, tasks here, it, it starts automatically to appear in, the, in, the, in a different board. And this time, it's, it starts to be handled by the team leader. So it, it's actual development begins. So you get uh, like a first preview and rough estimation. Uh, then you get this uh, design process, uh, grooming. And, and finally, when you are uh, done with all of this and confirm with the client that it's ready, you get to this ready, which is again uh, goes uh, to the Scrum board. And then, of course, it's, uh, it's uh, almost regular Scrum board, except, as I said, with this uh, review field. Um, and everybody is happy. Uh, we, as we worked with this Kanban boss for a little bit, we found that we can actually put more stuff there. Uh, and one notable thing we find that it's actually by design. Uh, but uh, with all the other uh, bugs uh, we needed to somehow handle, have to get back in two weeks. Uh, so, but bugs are very critical as always, so you cannot keep them in progress. Uh, you have to go and put them somewhere else because a, each time you will be taking it and seeing, ah, yes, of course, what we did there, ah, we're waiting, okay. And regarding the responsibles, it's sort of short version of, of the support, uh, of the, the development board. It's like a product manager who actually receives information about those bugs. Ruin the sprint because we only reserve certain amount for bugs and we don't expect them because, you know, we do everything well from the start. Uh, and uh, then we have uh, one uh, developer with some token, like a wrench in this case, uh, to look after this board more frequently than one uh, time a day. So he will be responsible to looking at those boards as soon as, as they are coming. Uh, you can rotate them uh, for each sprint, but in this particular case, uh, we actually got approval from customers so that 
uh, we actually dedicate that person so to this. Uh, so uh, what actually we get this wrench constantly connected to him. So, but that's only for this particular case. Uh, as I said, you can rotate it uh, one by one uh, for each sp uh, sprint, for example. So basically, that was the story. separately. Also for bigger and complex systems, especially the ones that uh, maybe you started working on an existing system. It was a legacy system in this case. We didn't start it from scratch. So you are not that changed and it will automatically spur some more questions and you avoid that questions uh, during sprint planning. Um, okay, so if those Kanban boards become too big, you can split them. The Whenever you get some crazy requirements from the customer, Try to look how you can get something from that for yourself. And that only means changing the attitude. You don't need to change the process. You just need to change how you look at it. And if you find something uh, that it does something to you personally or maybe for the sake of the team, uh, then it automatically will become uh, more approachable and uh, give you less stress when doing this. So. That's pretty much it. Any questions? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, the question is, uh, if we exclude the testing from the sprint, what is the definition of done? Um, The, uh, we don't have testing in definition of done. Uh, you see, uh, in this case, I can maybe expand a little bit on what testing meant. Uh, because uh, it, during the release cycle, uh, we also have extended test product testing uh, on the client side on all the acceptance testing and so forth. So basically what we did is that, uh, first of all, we excluded those tasks and basically left for the developers only to prepare as much as possible so they could actually do the demo. Uh, and all the corner cases that uh, would not be covered by, um, by the demo would, would have to be either in unit tests or we leave it for the final acceptance test of the system. So we actually phased out it. Uh, we no longer have it uh, at all in the development process. Okay. So the question is, uh, if we have one task that goes between the boards, or there are many tasks going, or many boards? Many tasks for each board. Yes, we only have those boards that I have shown you. So it's basically like uh, four boards. So two for, for the preparation, one is for sprint, so actual development, and one is for bugs. And all the... I, Wait a second, you meant like user stories or tasks? Yeah. Ah, okay, so up to the sprint task, uh, up to the sprint board and scrum board, uh, we handle it on user story level. So it's actually you analyze what needs to be done for a user story. 
And in these cases, when you find, for example, that it's actually too big to fit in a sprint, here is where you actually split it into smaller user stories and do it again. So uh, all the boards go by the user story level. Uh, the Scrum board goes by the tasks because the tasks get produced during sprint planning. And bugs go by themselves because we don't have either user story or... In some cases, uh, if the tasks are bigger, we can split them into tasks. Uh, but uh, as I said, we usually then take them into the sprint as, a, as we would take user story and then we can fix it uh, with subtask or something. Uh, no. Uh, up to the Scrum, you only have user story. If you split it, you split it. And you have two user stories. You can write that they are related or something, but usually you have separate. Yes. Yeah, so the question is if it is the same like item or, or I, something that, I think it's item in, in, the, in the JIRA uh, that has a number. So if it is the same one that is going across the board, so it's different. Yes, it's the same. If you create uh, those boards on the same project and you can, can create multiple boards uh, for the same project, it's the same. It actually has the same link, it uh, has the same everything. So this um, automatic. Yes, yes, you can play with uh, different statuses and filters. So if, if, uh, if uh, somebody puts uh, the task into this last column, it will automatically appear in the sp uh, sprint backlog. So did we find the correlation between the complexity of, I don't know, user stories or tasks uh, during sprint uh, planning probably? And uh, amount of time that we need to review. Um, we didn't actually look at it in this very uh, sort of scientific way, <laughs> but after some time we uh, developed a kind of a, a feeling, if you will. It's basically like experience that if you do like a simple task that exposes some external web service, you would know that there will be changes only in this place. So it will be easier for people to review and it's a, unlikely that it will get uh, done wrong. But uh, if, if, for example, you see that it's something like new task or it's on the place that you aren't that familiar with, nobody on the team, for example, worked on it previously, then we expect some problems here. So we increase both uh, estimations for development and estimations for the uh, review task. But now that I've said it, I think the answer is yes. There is a correlation, so the bigger the estimate for the original task, the more you put uh, on the review. So the question, where do you put this uh, review time? Is it in the task or separately? First, we did it separately, and we had problems with that. Now we include it directly into the task, and we do it this way. So the G Jira has this built-in field for estimation of the tasks. 
So at when we evaluate uh, and get evaluation from the team, how much uh, we get the estimate basically. And then we add to this estimate the number that we will need for code review. And we also have a separate field that says how much time we added on this uh, review. So this is more informational, but uh, in the end, uh, what Jira shows you is the total time. So you will, s it's a little bit hard in that respect that once you go with, you finish with the development, uh, you must expect that the remaining time is the same or higher than you have left for quality uh, assurance uh, for this review. But we are working on that. Uh, there are some um, scripting capabilities in Jira, but they are not that easy to manage. So maybe we'll get to that someday, maybe next year. <sighs> okay. Five minutes, but I think we don't need that. Let's enjoy the break. Thank you.